Hello you guys, this is Irene and today I wanted to talk about why it is important to have access to a man's money. And I just want to start this off by being very clear, there are two things that really matter and that is a man's time and his money, okay? You want access to both of those things. In this particular video, we're only going to talk about the money, but time and money are both essential for you to gauge where it is that you stand with a man and like where he really views and is placing you in his life and under his you know, realm of priorities. And how this will look is going to be different for different men. So when I say access to their money, I am not talking about like he's willing to take you out, he's you know on a date or anything like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about true and real access. So will he invest in businesses? Will he um, invest in your comfort? Will he invest not because you need it, right? But in your protection. Like, will he invest his money in those things? Things that are not necessities. Will he invest in that? Things that are necessities. Will he invest in that? And um, it will look different depending on the man that you're dealing with. So, for example, um, if you are dealing with a man that has less money, it's going to look different than you than if you're dealing with a man that has more money. So let's talk about men who have more money because that's just where I have more experience with. And I'm going to give you an example of a man that throws out a lot of cash, but I didn't really have access to his money because I didn't have access to his heart. I just had access to his lust for me, his desire to get me into bed. So um, I'm still friends with this guy. And hey, if you're watching this, <laughs> I'm not going to mention your name. So please don't be upset that I share this story. It's just for learning purposes. So um, I know a man. Uh, I know a man, right? He is gorgeous, y'all. He is tall. He is very, very dark skinned, beautiful skin. He is fine, OK? And he's a millionaire. Okay. So he is taking off boxes like all over the place. Um, grade A on paper. Very sweet. He's not a jerk or anything like that. He's a very sweet guy, father of two children. Um, cool with his ex wife. Um, loves his girls. Puts them first. Uh, just fine. I mean, the man is fine and rich. So all of these things, right? So he approached me, we met, I wasn't really vibing with it. He approached me again and he was like, um, basically laying his proposal on the table. Like this is what I'm willing to bring to the table. So he laid his proposal on the table. He was basically like, this is what I'm willing to bring. This is what I have to offer. Um, this is what I will not offer. He gave me like a very straight up proposal. And so I was like, okay, I'll consider this. This isn't exactly what I want, but I will be flexible because I did like him, right? So to put it in perspective, he liked to go out. He had a taste for liqueur, expensive liqueur. So he liked to, he lived in Palo Alto. He liked to vibe out there because he was in tech. Um, and everywhere we went were the nicest places. Um, everything we ate, everything we drank, top quality. If we went out three, four times in a week, it was nothing for him to spend, you know, a few thousand dollars on me in a week. Um, so the norm, right? So our birthdays are about 10 days apart. Like literally our birthdays are about 10 days apart. And so I was pre prepping him for my birthday, right? Because I'm not going to, I'm not the sort of person that is going to have expectations of a person that are above my expectations for myself, that are above what I do for myself, that are above the life that I have for myself. So where I am, I need you to meet me there. And if you exceed that, then don't. Do you know what I mean? But at least meet me there. So... Obviously, he could do this. He had more money than I did at the time. So um, I 
take him to one of my favorite restaurants in Walnut Creek called Sasa. He was on a special diet because he was trying to keep his beauty, right? His handsomeness in check, his body in check and all of that. Um, because he was like 10 years older than me. So he was still, but you know, black, never cracks. So he was fine still. Um, and I was already leery of it because here's the thing. And I will do a whole separate video on this, but ladies, you cannot be with a man who is equally or more attractive than you. You can, but it's stupid. Okay, could it work? It could, but rarely, um, especially not in the long term. So that's like a dangerous, dangerous prospect. Like things have to be very, 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 very right. You must be more attractive than the man that you're with, this period. You also need to be significantly younger than the man that you're with. But I could do a whole nother video on that. So I was already on the fence, but I was like, whatever. Like I'm all in. We're, I mean, I'm still more attractive than him, but he's really fine, right? And I am younger, so whatever. So um, anyway, I I plan our dinner for his birthday at Sasa. Um, I order off menu because, like I said, there were certain things he couldn't eat. Which by off menu, I mean that there's a menu at Sasa, and what we ate wasn't on the menu. So I sat down with them, and I was like, "This is what he won't eat. This is what I see in my head." can you guys create these courses? So for every course that we planned, there was also a pairing of liqueur because he doesn't drink wine or champagne, but he likes liqueur. So we had pairings of liqueur through to dessert. And then I went to Gucci because he's like a belt guy and I bought him, this is before Gucci was like something that was popular. Um, Cause you know, Gucci comes in and out of popularity, but because he had a lot of belts, I was just going for a brand that I knew he didn't already have. So I went to Gucci, I bought him a belt, um, and so that was the birthday. And then after, even after that, because like I said, it's a regular thing for him, he was like, I want to go somewhere else, because he was like filling himself, do you know what I mean? He like popped on his belt, he was like, oh, the food's so good, he was really happy, I was mindful of his diet that he was on, and then after that, he took me somewhere, do you know what I mean? So it was very cute. Anyway, my birthday rolls around. So he knows that I have a favorite spot in wine country in California. And um, so he took me out to dinner and he didn't, first of all, give me a present at dinner. So I was a little bit irritated. He was like, your present is at your favorite spot. Go and tell them to um, that you have something in the safe. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like something's in the safe. I'm going to get jewelry. I'm going to get like something, right? And obviously a spa treatment because you're not going to have me show up at a spa and I'm not about to get a treatment. So I go to my favorite spa, which is a drive, right? Because it's not like I live there. So I go to my favorite spa. I'm like, I have something in the safe. Now to put my reaction to what was in the safe into extra, extra perspective, this is my favorite spa, which means I frequent this spa. For my daughter, I think it was her eighth birthday, I took her to this spa. It was her first spa trip. Um, she got a mani, a pedi, we did brunch, we went shopping, all of this spa. Now, I wanna say that she's been getting mani pedis and stuff like that, but this was like how mom does it. Do you know what I mean? Because it's cheap to go to like the nail shop and get a mani pedi. $10, you know what I mean, with your kid or whatever. This was like, it was going to be adult prices. Do you know what I'm saying? Whether she could get all the stuff or not, they were treating her like an adult. And we would have done, done body wraps and stuff like that, except for they don't do them on children. So anyway, in the safe, there was not jewelry. In the safe was a spa gift certificate, which is fine, but it was for like $200. Y'all, I was pissed. I literally called him and I complained. Y'all, I would complain because here's the thing. You're going to know that I'm just pleased because this can never be repeated. I was like, why would you, like, I went to, through so much trouble for your birthday. Why would you take me to that restaurant, which wasn't even the nicest restaurant, um, and $200, this won't even get me the top package at the spa. So make this make sense. 
for me. So anyway, I was pissed. And so we were going out. I met him at his house. The belt was a little big. It wasn't quite fitting. And I was like, well, I'll take it back to Gucci and I'll get a smaller belt size. But I was just seething in my own anger. And, you know, I just returned that belt to Gucci and got my money back. And I just, because when I went to his house, the Gucci bag was sitting there. And he hadn't even opened up the card that I included. Now, this is like a week later. He hadn't even opened up the card that I included with the bag. So this is what I mean by access to a man's money. It could be for a different kind of man that dinner at a semi-nice restaurant and a $200 spa trip makes sense and that's good. But for this man, that was not good. That was a problem for me. And that was the point where I realized this relationship could go no further because you're not really feeling me like that. You know what I'm saying? Like the treatment I'm getting is the same treatment any woman that you go with is gonna get. Any woman that you deal with is going to go with you to the nicest places. Any woman that you deal with is going to get, I only got something for the birthday. Do you know what I mean? Because that's how a little bit of extra you are trying to do something for me, like do for me, you know, but like, no, it was a problem. So I was actually literally irritated. And so I shut that situation down. Why am I sharing this story? I'm sharing this story because Access to a man's money is important. When men are into you, they give you two things. They give you their time, their time, and their money. Those two things. Again, this is not about needing money. This is not about gold digging. It's not about any of that. It's about this person choosing to care for you the way they care for themselves. If he is taking a full-on trip, out of town, out of the country, wherever for his birthday. When your birthday comes around, you should get something almost as good as, if not as good as, or better than what he is doing for himself. If he's the sort to shell it out for his mom, his kids, his whatever, but he's not willing to do that for you, it's not the one. If you're starting a business and he has no interest in investing in that, then there's a problem there if he's got it like that. So like I said, this will look different depending on the man's finances. And this is not about securing the bag. Okay. This is not about securing the bag. It's about reading men's signals, right? A hoe will just give you access to her body, but a woman who cares about herself will withhold access to her body, and then when she gives you access, you know that you've gained something through the access to her body, right? In the same way, the thing that the man cares about the most, when you get access to that, then that is speaking values. When you get access to his private life, to his close circle of friends, to his time, to his money, when you get access to the things that he holds near and dear that everybody who has a vagina is not about to get, then you've accomplished something with that man. If he's not giving you that, then it's a problem. And so that is where I'm gonna stand with this. I hope that you found this information helpful and I'll talk to you guys later.